Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Okay, the next theory. How do we find the angle between a line and a plane? So now hold a pen at an angle to your desk and imagine a light source overhead beaming directly downwards to the desk. The angle theta between the line represented by the pen and the plane is the angle between the line represented by the pen and the line representing its shadow cast upon the desk. This angle cannot be found directly, for a vector representing the direction of the shadow is not known. However, a vector which is perpendicular to the direction of the shadow is known. If the equation of the line is r equals to a plus lambda b, and the equation of the plane is r dot n equals to d, then the angle theta can be found from the equation cos 90 degree minus theta equals to b dot n over the modulus of b times the modulus of n and which can then be simplified using trigonometric identity as sine theta so sine theta equals to b dot n over the modulus of b times the modulus of n so that is how you find the angle between a line and a plane All right, how do we find the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular from a point to a plane? So we have seen an example just now. We're going to look at this on another perspective. So imagine modeling a beautiful woman or a handsome man standing upright on a horizontal plane pi as a uniform rod an, as shown in this diagram. Where is the foot of the perpendicular from the point A to the plane pi? The answer is where the person's feet are. This is the point N, thus locating the position vector of the foot of the perpendicular from the point A to the plane pi is a special case of finding the position vector of the point of intersection between a line and a plane. In this case, we have r dot n equals to d and r equals to a minus lambda n. So we name these two equations and we sub 2 into 1 and it will give us a minus lambda n dot n equals to d. So solving for lambda gives lambda equals to a dot n minus d over n dot n. Thus the position vector of the point n is given by O n equals to a minus a dot n minus d over n dot n times n. Note that once the point n is known, the perpendicular distance of the point a from the plane pi is given by the modulus of a n. So a n equals to O n minus O a, and we substitute O n inside, which is a minus a dot n minus d over n dot n times n minus a which is equals to, since the a cancel each other out, so we, get, we will get minus a dot n minus d over n dot n times n. And we know that n dot n, the identity, is the modulus of n squared. That's something you need to know as well. So the modulus of n can then be cancelled out, and we obtain a clean answer a simplified one, which is a dot n minus d over the modulus of n. And this is just the formula for the perpendicular distance of a point from a plane as derived earlier. Okay, now we want to find the line of intersection of two non-parallel planes. 
So consider this diagram. Since the line of intersection L of the planes pi1 and pi2 lies in the plane pi1, its direction vector B is perpendicular to n1, the normal vector to the plane pi1. And since the line of intersection L of the planes pi1 and pi2 also lies in the plane pi2, its direction vector B is also perpendicular to n2, the normal vector to the plane pi2. Thus, B is parallel to n1 cross n2. The method for finding a point on the line of intersection is as follows. So first step is arbitrarily assign a value to any one of the variables x, y, or z in the Cartesian equation for the planes pi1 and pi2 provided the corresponding element in n1 cross n2 is non-zero. So the most convenient step is usually to set z equals to 0. And the second step is to solve the resulting two equations in the two unknowns. So now let us look at an example. We want to find the line of intersection of the planes with Cartesian equation 2x minus 5y plus 4z equals to 3 and 3x minus 4y minus 2z equals to 8. So let the equation of the line of intersection be r equals to a plus lambda b. From the equations given, the normal vectors n1 and n2 to so the planes are given by n1 equals to 2 minus 5, 4, and n2 equals to 3 minus 4 and minus 2. Thus, we can conclude that b equals to n1 cross n2. So 2 minus 5, 4 cross 3 minus 4 minus 2 and you will get 26, 16 and 7 for b. So now you have done the first step. None of the elements of b are 0, therefore any of the variables x, y, z can be arbitrarily assigned a value, most conveniently 0. So we let z equals to 0 then we we'll obtain 2x minus 5y equals to 3 as our first equation and 3x minus 4y equals to 8 as our second equation. And solving this simultaneous linear equation, you will obtain x equals to 4 and y equals to 1. So we know x is 4, y is 1 and z is 0. Then the line of intersection, because it's a line, so we have a point and a direction vector. So the point is 4, 1, 0, and the direction vector is the B, which we have just found 26, 16, and 7. Now let us look at another example. We want to find the position vector of the point N, which is the foot of perpendicular from the given point P to the given line L. So look at them, L is this and P is that. So 
we have learned already, we need to draw out a diagram labeling them N, P, and R. So to find N, we need to find lambda. So then we have the vector Pn is perpendicular to the direction vector B. So in order to do that, we require R minus P dot B equals to zero. So what is R minus P? We just copy down the R minus the P. So minus one, one, three plus lambda times four, minus one, minus three, minus 10, five, minus one. And we simplify it into minus 11, minus four, four plus lambda times four, minus one, minus three. And we now dot this equation with B. What is the B? The B is 4 minus 1 and minus 3. So we perform the operation. Which we we'll simplify into minus 52 plus 26 lambda equals to 0. So lambda equals to 2. Okay, thus, substituting lambda back to the original equation, we will obtain on equals to minus 113 plus 2 times 4 minus 1 minus 3. And on equals to 7 minus 1 minus 3. And we are not done yet. We want to find the modulus of Pn. So we first find Pn, which equals to R minus P. And R minus P is minus 11 minus 4, 4 plus, because lambda equals to 2, so 2 times 4 minus 1 minus 3. So Pn equals to minus 3 minus 6 minus 2. And the modulus of Pn equals to the square root of minus 3 squared plus minus 6 squared plus minus 2 squared, which gives us a value of 7. Okay, let us look at this example. It wants us to find the angle between the planes pi1 and pi2, which are defined by the equation below. pi1 equals to 2x plus 3y minus 4z equals to 6, and pi2 equals to 3x minus 5y plus 2z equals to 9. So, we want to let theta be the angle between the two planes. So we have cos theta equals to, so remember from the formula that we have learned just now, we are going to use the normal of each of the plane. So n1 of pi1 is 2, 3, minus 4. And n2 of pi2 is 3, minus 5, and 2. So n1 dot n2, the modulus, divided by the modulus of n1 times the modulus of n2, which I've written down here, equals to 17 over the square root of 29 times the square root of 38. So to find the theta, you just plug in the inverse cos of this number into your calculator and you will obtain a number of 59.2 degree, one decimal place. Now we want to find the perpendicular distance of a point from a line. So look at this diagram, the position vector 
of the points A and P are A and P, small letter, respectively. These points will be given in a question. The given line is parallel to the vector B, and the required perpendicular distance is thus the modulus of NP. So there are three methods of obtaining this distance. The first one is using the identity of the sign. So we know that the modulus of NP equals to the modulus of AP sine theta. And then we times the modulus of B divided by the modulus of B. And we immediately can use the identity of the sine, which is AP cross B. And simplifying it, AP equals to P minus A. And that is the first method. The second method is quite similar to the first method, but instead of using the vector identity, we use the sine identity. So we know that sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1, so sine theta equals to the square root of 1 minus cos squared theta. And how do we get cos theta? So again, from the initial formula, the dot product, so cos theta equals to AP dot B, over the modulus of AP times the modulus of B. And the third method is using Pythagoras theorem. So since it is a right angle triangle, so the modulus of AP squared equals to the modulus of AN squared plus the modulus of NP squared. And we rearrange the equation because we want to find the modulus of NP. So we have AP and how do we get AN? So AN is the length of projection of AP on the line R equals to A plus lambda B. So using the formula that we have learned just now, the length of projection equals to AP dot B over the modulus of B. And that is the three method that you can find the perpendicular distance. So try to use all of them and see which one suits you the most so the quickest one will be the one that you want to use. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genie has got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye